blessing day to everyone. That's how we all wish our day will start and end. Simply pleasant. Today, we will be looking at the life of Naomi, a woman in the Bible found in the book of Ruth. Things started out well with Naomi. Her name means pleasant, which aptly described her life. We all have our names carefully chosen by our parents, even as parents to our very own children, where we put a special meaning to their names. This holds true with Naomi as she was living up to her name, having a pleasant life, a family of her own, well provided for in a land where people worship the same God, the God of Israel. Everything seemed right until tragedy struck their land. Let us first find out what tragedy is all about. It is something unpleasant, something that caused great suffering, whether external or internal, a destruction of life or properties that may or may no longer be redeemed. Just like Naomi, we all experience tragedy in varying degrees, individually, as a family, as a nation, and worst is globally. And how can we all forget the effects of COVID infection? And then the wars among nations, which brought sicknesses and deaths. Personally, tragedy is not foreign to me. It is something not new in my family. When we experienced our house burned into ashes, which led us to move to another place. We found comfort and stability in our new place but we were not spared from the perils of Bagyong Ondoy. After some years, we faced uncertainty in attending to both my critically ill father, who had stomach cancer, and my father-in-law with severe heart issues. It was a grueling, unpleasant three months for both sides of the family. Moving from one hospital to the other, battling with the situations before us, which ended in death for the both of them. It was such a tragedy that we all faced as two families embraced what we saw as God's hand moving in our midst. Most, if not all of us, experience tragedy at some point in one's life. If I were to ask you, how do you cope with tragedy? During the pandemic, most of us found comfort in being with our families at home or through friends who gave us helping hands and ears that listened to each other's ordeals, while some found their way back to God. Since the pandemic, most of us were kept in our houses, rekindling our love with our family, as we watched the world outside us trying to stop COVID and its spread, while others deal with its heartbreaking effects, like the loss of jobs and the tragedy of losing lives and properties. For Naomi, it was quite a different story. It was more tragic to say the least. You see, the book of Ruth opened with a tragedy, which was a famine in their land, in Bethlehem. We were introduced to Elimelech, husband of Naomi, who bore Naomi with two sons, namely Malon and Kilion. And because of the famine in Bethlehem, they were forced to move to Moab, a land foreign to them, where people worshipped other gods with strange customs, but with enough food and shelter to provide for their family. I presume that it was a big adjustment for Naomi and their family. In my case, it's still crystal clear for me. When we had the same experience after the fire of moving to another house, being new in the area, in the neighborhood, getting used to the environment, and adjusting to the traffic of long hours of travel. My experience, though, could not be compared to that of Naomi. For while in Moab, Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, leaving the two sons with her. And with the two sons, they both got married. But after a while, both sons died too, leaving the two daughters-in-law, Ruth and Orpa, with Naomi. This must be so disheartening for Naomi. I lost two people dear to me in a span of one month, my father-in-law and my father. But with Naomi, she lost not only two, but three of her loved ones. I can honestly say that this must 
have been too much for Naomi to bear. But with a series of bad news came some good news for her. The news was that the Lord had come to visit his people in Bethlehem, providing them with food. With no man in Naomi's life, she was able to decide for herself to make wise decision. So Naomi thought it best to go back home. This time, she opted to leave her daughters-in-law, Ruth and Orpah in Moab, which was their land to be with their people and their God. Naomi granted them the blessing of having another husband for themselves. We see that Naomi lost her family, her husband and two sons, and yet she took courage in releasing her two daughters-in-law. I too am a mother-in-law to two wonderful people, and I couldn't imagine myself being in the shoes of Naomi, left alone to herself while disconnecting people close to her who have been a part of her life already. People who can be her constant companion in her old age. I find it so selfless of her to think of others and be mindful of their own interests and not her own. In the case of Orpa, she went back to her people in Moab. But Ruth insisted to stay with Naomi, to be with her people, and to embrace her God, the God of Israel. And because of Ruth's decisiveness, Naomi was left with no option but to take Ruth with her back to her homeland, Bethlehem. I don't know what tragedy you had experienced in the past and how you were able to cope with it. Or maybe you are still going through it or reaping the effects of the tragedy. And just like Naomi, we may find ourselves in the same state of mind and more so the same state of heart. Let us find out then what was really in the mind and heart of Naomi. You see, upon returning to her hometown in Bethlehem, she was met by some women. They were scared of her presence after being gone for many years. And so they questioned her if she indeed was Naomi. And to which Naomi replied, Don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara. Because the Almighty has made my life very bitter. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi? The Lord has afflicted me. The Almighty has brought misfortune upon me. You see, there's not much details about how Naomi coped with the loss of her husband and two sons. But one thing was certain. She wanted to be called Mara, meaning bitter. From living a pleasant life, she chose to be bitter about her misfortune and blamed God about it. What about us? Can we all relate to Naomi? When tragedy strikes, do we regress, sulk, or blame God like her? At some point we do, but some would bounce back easily while others don't, so that bitterness escalates to a depressive state and hopelessness. In the case of Naomi, she realized that God was able to provide not just food, as was provided in Bethlehem, God used Naomi to influence Ruth to accomplish God's purpose in both their lives. Naomi responded positively by accepting Ruth in her life. And part of that was Naomi's intentionality to look for Ruth's future spouse, a kinsman's redeemer, one that was able to provide for her, one who was landed, who owned a field, one was a good heart, And in Ruth 2, verse 1 and 4, he was described as a worthy man, and most of all, as one who believed in the Lord. This came in the person of Boaz, from the clan of Elimelech, Naomi's deceased husband. And so Naomi was instrumental on how Boaz and Ruth ended up marrying each other, with Ruth having to bore Boaz a son, which they named Obed. In the story, We can see here the heart of Naomi, someone who experienced loss and hopelessness. And yet, because of God in her life at this point, she took notice of Ruth. She looked into the heart of Ruth, a woman of worth who gave up her own comfort to be a caring daughter-in-law that she was. From bitterness, Naomi became a blessing to Ruth. Naomi gave her not only hope through Boaz, her redeemer, a life that will give her security. Just thinking about it now, 
Have you experienced being bitter about life or have you used your tragedy in being a blessing to others? In the end, Naomi too became a recipient of God's grace as she herself was treated as adoptive mother-in-law to Boaz, where she was given not only the privilege to care of their son Obed, but to be taken care of as well, even in her old age. In hindsight, this wasn't the end of the story. It's like an unfinished tapestry. If we are to define tapestry, it is a piece of cloth with a pattern or picture that is created by sewing or weaving different colored threads onto a special type of strong cloth or canvas. It's a beautiful work of art that can be hanged on wall for people to see. You see, everything that happened so far in the life of Naomi was like a piece of an unfinished tapestry. And why did I say that? To complete the picture, as you can see, the marriage of Elimelech with Naomi brought forth two sons, one of which was Malon, married to Ruth, who later in the story married Boaz. Boaz, who married Ruth and bore her a son, Obed. Obed later on became the father of Jesse, while Jesse became the father of David, whom the Bible describes as the man after God's own heart. From David's line, after several generations, later on brought forth the birth of Jesus, the ultimate bringer of hope and of life in all its fullness. So we can see from one tragedy to another that brings darkness and hopelessness of sin and death from feeling of abandonment and bitterness. What can marvel at the beautiful tapestry behind it all that carries with it all the woven events in one's life, be it dark or colorful events from the past, from past relationships, from past encounters that are all sewn up together by no less than our master's soul, our God Almighty. And through Naomi's lineage, God used her life, even her tragedies, that God's only son, Jesus, will be born. Through his death on the cross and his resurrection, Jesus became our one and only true redeemer. He qualifies only those who believe in his name to be redeemed from the penalty of their sins. He alone gives a life-giving hope in this world and beyond. And for those who put their trust solely in Jesus, he completes a beautiful tapestry that has eternal value, that is life eternal. Through a simple prayer, you too can express your desire to put your faith in Jesus, our true Redeemer and only Savior, through his finished work at Calvary. With your eyes closed, allow me to lead you in prayer. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, I admit that I am a sinner and I cannot make it on my own. Today, I put my faith in you and you alone. Come into my heart. I accept you as my only Savior, my hope, and my only Redeemer. Thank you for your unconditional love, for giving yourself by dying on the cross for the forgiveness of all my sins. May my life be a reflection of your spirit working in me, in my life. Amen. The Bible says in John 1.12, Yet to all who did receive him, meaning Jesus, he gave the right to become children of God. While in 1 John 5.12, God promised that whoever has the Son has life, and whoever does not have the Son does not have life. As children of God, we not only have eternal life in Christ Jesus, but eternal hope as well. So in this earthly life, we can be hopeful that tragedy can become a beautiful tapestry. And from Naomi's experiences, we can learn many lessons, such as the following. We learn that God will never leave us nor forsake us, whatever troubles we are into. We saw that God was with Naomi in every season. A, let us develop an attitude of faith in God and godly perspectives in everything and that 
tragedies are there to develop one's character. Oh, it gives us great peace knowing that our omniscient God knows everything about us and that He is not oblivious when we are troubled. That's why we should not falter in believing that He cares and ultimately He loves us. M, what a great promise from God to meet all our needs, be it physical, emotional, or spiritual needs, as was experienced personally by Naomi. I, the challenge for us now is we can be an influencer or an instrument to accomplish God's purpose, even if we may not see or understand His ways. With these lessons, it would be good for us to examine our lives through the following questions to see where we're at. When life's troubles or tragedies surround me, do I get bitter or become better as a person? Like Naomi, am I being used as an influencer or an instrument that will bring hope and security to those who are troubled as well? Do people see the face of tragedy in me or a beautiful tapestry of life that reflects God's masterpiece? And lastly, who is my Redeemer? And to end our time, I want us to listen to a song as inspired by Romans 15 verse 13, which speaks of hope, joy, and peace through trusting in Jesus. God bless you all. as you trust in Him. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him, so that you may overcome. 